ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فاما من طغى واثر الحياه الدنيا فان الجحيم هي الماوى واما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فان الجنه هي الماوى وقال عليه الصلاه والسلام الكيس من دان نفسه وعمل وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من اتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله Dear brothers and sisters, we begin by praising Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send peace and blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his companions and upon all those who have treaded in their footsteps of righteousness and piety. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who follow the deen sincerely and that follow all the commandments of the Qur'an and the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there was one quality in your life, or if there was one aspect in your life that you could change today, right now, and by changing that one aspect or quality of your life, the rest of your life would become much better. All other areas and fields of your life, you would achieve success. What would that be? If there was one aspect of your life, or one quality that you had, that you were able to improve, or change, or better, or even remove, and by doing so, the rest of your life, every other aspect of your life would become better. What would that be? That's a question that I think all of us need to ask ourselves. Because asking ourselves these kind of questions will eventually lead us to becoming aware of our shortcomings, whereby we can rectify ourselves and become better. But the answer to the question, and I think when I mention the answer, it should be pretty much... Everybody will pretty much agree that if we had a little bit more self-control, if we're able to discipline ourselves a little bit more, if we, if we could just do what we needed to do when we needed to do it and not be lazy about it, I think all of us would have had a better life. I think that's something all of us can agree on, right? That no matter how successful we are, deep down we always know that if I did a little bit better, if I just worked a little harder, then I know I could have done much better. So when I say, you know, if we can improve our discipline, or if we can control ourselves a little better, self-restraint, I think I speak for everyone, knowing that if we can improve this one quality, this one characteristic, this one trait in our lives, then everything else will become better as well. In fact, there's so many different books so many different programs and coaching uh, 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 programs that, uh, that are in place, that are in effect, which simply focus on teaching people how to be self-disciplined, how to discipline themselves. Discipline, the definition of discipline is doing what you need to do when you need to do it, right? Discipline is to doing what you need to do when you need to do it, when it needs to be done, not two hours later, not two days later, but when it needs to be done, you get it done, whether you like it or not. That's discipline. Then you understand you have to get this done, whether you feel like getting it done or not, you're going to do it. And disciplining yourself will eventually end up or result to creating better habits. And there's a beautiful saying, you know, uh, uh, there's this motivational speaker I listen to, his name is Zig Ziglar, right? He he says, if you do what you need to do, when you need to do it, then a time will come when you can do what you want to do, when you want to do it. Right? If you do what you need to do right now, when you need to do it, then a time will come when you can do whatever you feel like doing, whenever you want to do it. Right? And in our deen, this, un, uh, this concept of self-discipline, of self-restraint, is the foundation of everything. In Surah Al-Nazi'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا 
فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى He's comparing two different people One person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فأما من طغى The person who has transgressed The person who uh, uh, was neglectful and did not follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فأما من طغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا And he preferred his life in this world over the life of the hereafter he did not have enough discipline. The person knew. The person knew that one day I'll die. The person knew one day I'll have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person knew it was time to pray right now. The person knew that these are my responsibilities that I have to uh, uh, fulfill at the moment. But, وَآثَرَ الْحَيَةَ dunya. Rather, he gave preference to this world, the luxuries of this world, the uh, uh, instant gratifications of this world. So he's put away the sacrifice, he put away the things he needed to be done so that he can acquire long-term happiness in order to do things that will give him instant gratification, that will make him instantly happy, immediate pleasure. And that's the, you know, when you think of that, subhanAllah, that's the exact society that we're living in. We live in a society where we're just constantly bombarded with instant pleasure, right? You tell people about working hard, uh, working hard about making sacrifices, you know, controlling yourself, and they tell you things like, you know, uh, you're, you're too conservative, or, you know, uh, uh, what kind of life is that? But if you look at any successful person, whether that person be Muslim or not, right? You see that each person got, each successful person got to where they were because they had self discipline. They did what they needed to do when it needed to be done. Even if they're messed up, right? You have so many successful people that are just horrible people, that are just the worst people to deal with, right? They cheat, they, they cheat you, uh, they scam you, whatever the case. But they have the discipline to do everything on time. Whether they cheat you or lie to you, they still have the discipline to lie to you on time, right? And that's why they become successful. So having discipline is the foundation, the key to happiness and success in this world and the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. He says, the person who has transgressed, the person who has given preference to his life uh, in this world, over his responsibilities of the hereafter, فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى For that person, Jahannam will be his final abode. Why? Because he, he was not disciplined or she was not disciplined enough to carry out the injunctions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know what we need to do as Muslims. Right? And not just as Muslims. We, know, we all know what we need to do with our money. We know that we should be investing, we know we should be budgeting, we know we should be tracking our expenses, we know we should be saving up a, 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 some money, right? But when a person is not disciplined, they can have you know, a six-figure income, but their money goes away. I, in fact, know this, uh, uh, this individual who has an annual income of $300,000 annually. But the guy is in debt up to here. He has no money to use. And I'm like, you know, where, where does all your money go? He says, I, I don't know, you know, I, I get this money and then it's gone the next day. That's a lack of self-discipline. Not being able to track where your money goes, not being able to budget correctly, spending more than what you have. That's not being able to control yourself. We all know what we need to do in order to take care of our health, to take care of our body. But how, much, how many of us do that? We all know that we have responsibilities and obligations towards our families. But how many of us actually do what we need to? We know what our responsibilities are towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how many of us really do it? And what it all boils down to is not motivation. It's not motivation. Motivation is, it goes up and down. Some days you'll wake up and be very motivated. Other days you'll wake up and you'll, you'll want to stay in bed. It's not about motivation. It's about discipline whereby you build up this uh, a record of doing the same thing over and over again, whether you like it or not, until it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, 
there's no need for motivation. You'll just do it. You'll do what you need to do when you need to do it. When, it, when the time for Salah comes, it becomes a habit. You'll say, it's time for Salah, I, I, I just have to go. Without even thinking, it becomes second nature. When you build your self-discipline, everything that you know you need to do will start coming into place. Because we all know what we need to do. That's, alhamdulillah, all of us are educated and intelligent enough to know the basic things we need to do in order to establish and achieve a, a happy, a, a, a quality life. But many of us don't. Why? Simply because we make up excuses. But, you know, if, and this is not to point anyone out. But if you really had to sit down and ask yourselves a number of times, what can I do to improve my life? You know, when you first ask yourself that question, it's going to be very difficult answering it. Because you're going to give reason after reason after reason. But the more you ask yourself that question every single day, a time will come eventually where you'll run out of reasons and you'll get tired of asking yourself the same question and then you'll simply have to accept that, you know, I didn't do it because doing that was harder and I took the easy way out. Doing this was going to take up much more sacrifice, much more energy, much more of my time and I, I, I was just really lazy. I just didn't want to do it. So it all boils down to self-discipline, being able to control yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of the person who has no self-restraint, no control, no discipline. Instead, that person is always looking for the easy way out. That person is always looking for instant gratification, instant pleasure. You know, who needs to study for this test right now? I'd rather go and watch the game, right? Or, you know, who wants to stay up right now and uh, 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 spend time with my child or whatever the case? I'd rather watch TV, right? I was in Walmart the other day and I saw this huge TV, 64 inches, right? SubhanAllah, it's like, I don't know, why, why do you need a TV so large, right? <laughs> 64 inch TV. And we have these things in our homes and we think, you know, we're doing a great thing. And that TV becomes the barrier from spending more time with our families. It becomes the barrier from sitting down and reading a book. It becomes the barrier from interacting with other human beings. Right? Uh, I once gave a lecture, a khutbah, on why we should not have TVs in our homes. Right? Alhamdulillah, till today I don't have a TV in my home. Right? And I know a few people who don't. But this was three years ago, I gave a lecture that we should not have TVs in our homes. Not only from an Islamic perspective, but there's been so many books written on you know, written by non-Muslims, that if you want your children and your family to, you know, be successful, then get rid of the TV. So I gave that lecture once, I'll never give it again. Because after I gave it, I had 20 of these old men who came up to me and said, how can you say that? One guy came to me and he said, if I get rid of the TV, me and my, me and my wife will argue all, all day. It's a TV that keeps us calm. So... Is the TV really helping your relationship or is it just sedating you guys, right? So, uh, but I'll never give that lecture again, right? Uh, but anyways, I made that big mistake. I won't make it again. But going back to self-discipline, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a second example. He says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى That as for the person who خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ as for the person who was always aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence, meaning the person always knew that, you know, I have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will hold me accountable, right? If I do this, yes, it may, you know, make me happy right now. I may get instant gratification right now. But I'll have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّي and as a result, hawa, The person refrained from following his desires. The person refrained from taking the easy way out. Instead, the person took the hard way. The person did what needed to be done when it needed to be done. And for that person, فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Jannah, paradise, is his final abode, is his gift. And it's the same principle in this world. You see people who work hard, 
You see people who do what they need to do when they need to do it. You see that, that those people are the same people that end up being successful. Those are the same people that end up being on top. Right? And all the people who t- try taking shortcuts, who try having it easy, who want instant gratification and pleasure, you see they're always the one that works under these people. You have 20% of your society that are these successful people. And you have the rest 80% who work under these 20%. Right? It's the same principle in this world as it is in the hereafter. If we can develop this one quality of discipline, of restraining ourselves, of doing what we need to do when we need to do it, then inshallah, a time will come when we can do what we want to do when we want to do it. And that's something all of us really want. Right? And a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, give me an example, comparing between the person who has no discipline and the person who controls himself, a person who has self-discipline. He says, Al-Kayis man dana nafsa wa amila ni ma ba'd al maut. He says, Al-Kayis, Kayis is the person who is Al-Aqil, is an intelligent person. Uh, uh, um, uh, it says, Al-Kayis, ay Al-Aqil al-Mutabassir, fil umur, an nadir fil awakib. That Al-Kayis is a person who is intelligent. Al-Mutabassir fil umur, he has foresight into what he's doing. An nadir fil awakib. He is aware of the consequences and the implications of his actions. That you do one thing today, you understand or you have an idea of what the result is going to be five, six weeks down the line or two, three years down the line. They don't make hasty decisions. They don't make irrational choices. That's the person who is al qayyis They have foresight, they have intellect, they have understanding and long-term sight, long-term view. So the Prophet ﷺ says, al qayyis man dana nafsa. Is a person who puts his self down. The intelligent person is the person, al kayis is the one who dana nafsa. Right? Dana comes from low. Right? And from dana is also the word dunya. Dunya is low. Right? Dunya is low. Al akhirah is the one that's on top. It's next. Right? So dana is the one who lowers himself. He, he restrains himself, he restrains his desires. He doesn't do whatever he feels like doing. Rather, وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ Rather, he has the foresight and the understanding to understand that after death, there is uh, going to be that accountability. So, عَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ Therefore, he works for the hereafter. He doesn't work only for today, but he works for 10 years down the line, and he works for what's even going to happen after he passes away. That is the person who was al qayyis he has foresight, he has understanding and intellect. So what does he do? He controls himself, she does what she needs to do, and they work towards achieving long-term goals. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he compares that to the person, Al-Ajiz, the person who is deficient. Al-Ajiz, a person who is hopeless, a person who is hapless, a person who really can't get anything done, is deficient. Right. It says, al ajiz al muqsir fil umur. A person who really doesn't know what's going on. They make hasty decisions, irrational, uh, uh, uncalculated decisions. You know, let me just do this, let me see what happens. Right. And what's the quality of this person? This person, man ittaba'a nafsahu hawaha. This is the person that makes his desire, makes himself follow his desires. This is the person who does whatever he feels like doing for instant gratification. This is the person who does whatever he feels like doing because it's easy. This is the person who does whatever he wants to do because they don't want to put in the time, the effort, the sacrifice of doing what's right. That is the person who is al-ajiz, the person who is uh, 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 weak, the person who is uh, deficient, the person who is hapless. And what's the result of this person? It says, "Man ittaba' nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna 'ala Allah." And on top of that, once they make all these mistakes, once not mistakes, once they, you know, see the consequences and implications of not doing what they needed to do, of trying to take the easy way out, of trying to find shortcuts, 
then they land themselves into trouble. And what do they do next? Instead of taking responsibility, right? Instead of saying, you know, I'm in the situation I'm in, I'm in the trouble that I'm in because of my uh, actions, instead of taking responsibility, the person, وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ The person starts saying, oh, Allah will help me out of this situation, right? I know so many people, <laughs> uh, so many people, uh, you ask them, uh, you know, didn't the doctor tell you you're not supposed to be eating this? Oh, you know, Allah will take care of me. Okay, <laughs> right. So many people, I, I, they're like that. So the al-ajiz, the person who's deficient, is the person who does all these shortcuts. They look for instant gratification, instant pleasure. And then when they land themselves into trouble, then instead of taking responsibility, because if they take responsibility, they have to accept that I have to change my habits. I have to start doing what's needed. Instead they say, Allah will take care of it. I'll continue doing what I'm doing and you know, uh, Allah will help me out. Right? And we have to ask ourselves, where do we f- fit in? Are we the person who's the al uh, uh, um, The person who has foresight? The person who controls ourselves? The person who has self-discipline? And we do what we need to do? Or are we the second person? That we do everything incorrectly, we do everything that's easy, we try taking shortcuts, we you know, forego our responsibilities, and then when we fall into trouble, we say, Allah will take care of it. You know, I'm a good Muslim, Allah will take care of it. So we have to ask ourselves, where do we fall? Are we the first person, or are we the second person? And that's the conversation you need to have with yourself. And when you find out where you are, you need to take responsibility. Responsibility has to be taken. Right? Umar radil anhu, one thing he would mention all the time is, Hasibu anfusakum qabla antu hasabu. That take accountability of yourself before accountability is taken of you. Hold yourself accountable. Look at your responsibilities. Take yourself into account. Are you doing what you need to do? Are you fulfilling your responsibilities? Are you doing the right things? Take accountability of yourself قَبَلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُ Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes accountability of you. Before accountability is taken of you. And what that means in essence is that if you don't look after yourself, if you are not concerned about making yourself better, then a situation will come whereby you're forced to learn it the hard way or a time will come when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have no answer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be questioning you. You had your entire life to become better. Why didn't you? So this is something that our deen takes very seriously. Having the self-restraint, self-discipline, the control to do what needs to be done, when it needs to be done. And secondly, always taking accountability of ourselves. Always checking up on ourselves. Always asking ourselves, that what did I do? What can I do differently? What can I do to improve myself and become better? If we're not asking ourselves these small questions every single day, for every single thing we do, then we'll never get better. We'll continue to do the same thing. You know, there's a saying that uh, uh, a stupid person is a person who does the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, right? If your life is miserable and doing the same thing over and over again, and you're looking for you know, a different result, then you need to ask yourself that maybe I need to do something differently at this point. If your relationship with your family is horrible, you need to ask yourself, what can I do differently? Because I've been doing this for the past 20 years and it's not working. I've been you know, having this sort of relationship with my son for the past uh, 18 years and it's not working out. What, what do I need to do differently? Right? So these are questions we have to ask ourselves and these are difficult questions. Why? Because when we ask these questions, we'll automatically throw out different responses. You know, just to avoid responsibility. Just to avoid making ourselves feel bad. And nobody wants to tell themselves, you know, yeah, I was lazy, I didn't really do it, and that's why my life is so horrible. Nobody wants to say that to himself. We all want to feel like, you know, we did the best. We all want to feel like we've achieved something. We all want to feel like we did something. Right? And that's why you see so many uh, 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 these rich people, these successful people. Majority of them are not in it for the money. It's, they become better day by day, and it's, 
something of accomplish for, accomplishment for them that today I was able to become better than I was, able, than I was yesterday. Right? So when we ask ourselves these questions, it's hard at first. Why? Because none of us wants to feel like, none of us wants to feel worthless. We all want to be able to tell ourselves that we did an amazing job, that we did what we needed to do. No one wants to tell themselves, yeah, you know, I'm such a horrible, pathetic, pathetic person. I'm lazy. You know, and that's why it's my fault my life is so horrible. It's, it's very difficult to admit that. But once you admit it, once you take responsibility, that's your first step towards change. And that's the first, and then you can start learning to discipline yourself, as Allah SWT says in the Quran, as Rasulullah teaches us. That at the end of the day, you'll, you'll, you'll have people, you know, uh, people you know, your friends, your colleagues, or whoever else. They'll tell you, you know, forget about this work or forget about doing that. Let's go, let, 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 let's go eat somewhere or let's go chill out. Let's go hang out, right? Forget this, you know, no one cares. Those are the people that will end up dragging you down and impeding you from achieving your goals. And then you'll see them 20 years later from now, they'll be in that same position. And if you haven't distanced yourself and do what you need to do, then you'll be in that same area. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow us to become self-disciplined. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discipline ourselves, uh, Allah give us the tawfiq to discipline ourselves, control ourselves, restrain, restrain ourselves from doing what we shouldn't be doing and giving us the discipline to do what we need to do when we need to do it. I mean, if there's anything I said that offended anyone, please forgive me. Inshallah, that was not my intention at all. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika ashtu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Majid. Wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum il-ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim. Astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa nisa'ili muslimin. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafuru al-Rahim. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله تعالى عمر وأستقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن الحسين سيدة شباب أهل الجنة وحمسة أسد الله وأسد رسوله إدوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين Just a few announcements inshallah tonight we will be having our family night and the topic for family night I think it's a very relevant topic we will be speaking about the different struggles and the hardships that the companions faced um, I think that's a very uh, um, relevant and a very beneficial topic for us to listen to. So inshallah, all of us are invited and welcome. So please bring yourselves and your families. We will be starting at 6.45 t tonight for dinner. And then after the Isha Salah, which is at 8 p.m., we will be having our uh, uh, event. So inshallah, everyone, please try to attend. Um, with that being said, inshallah, we can begin our Salah. Aqeem Salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة